So, we've got to think a little bit about trust this morning. And uh, we've got a very brief Bible reading, just the two verses for us today. But it'll be on the screens. And this is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 27 and 28. So, let's see what we make of this. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. There we go. Said it was brief, but a brief but significant passage, I think, this morning, uh, in which this guy, Levi, well, he's responding to Jesus' call to follow him. Now, we don't know much about Levi. He doesn't come up all that often in the gospel accounts. But his name, it seems, for a start, is significant because it goes back as a name, right back to the beginning of Genesis with Levi before he started to make jeans. He was one of, the, uh, one of Jacob's sons who had the 12 tribes of Israel named after them. So there was a tribe of Levi. And in time, members of this, this tribe, they were known as Levites, they were responsible for the care of the temple. Indeed, the name Levi means joined. So there's a sense, perhaps, in which Levites were, were joined to God through their work as priests and, and caretakers, effectively, of the temple. Fast forward, though, from, from those ancient sort of tribal days to the time of Jesus. And this guy, Levi, well, he's also joined but not, it seems, to, to God's service. Rather, he's joined to the Roman Empire, you know, demanding taxes for them. And as you can imagine, this career choice from a family line that was all about temple service, this would have appalled, probably, his wider family, his tribe, as Levi had, in effect, joined, not God, but joined the enemy, if you like, with the Roman Empire. And yet, despite this career choice of Levi's, we see that Jesus approaches him. Now, it's likely this encounter happens in the town of Capernaum, on which we've looked at before, but it's the place where Jesus lived as an adult. And it's quite a small town, so we might think, well, did Jesus already know Levi? Well, probably, given that the size of the town, and Levi probably knew all about Jesus, maybe even had seen or, or heard about some of the many miracles that we're told Jesus had performed in Capernaum. And so when Jesus approaches Levi and says, follow me, I suspect Levi was very quickly kind of weighing things up in his head, you know, weighing things up like the scales he'd used to measure people's taxes. Does he want to remain joined to the Roman state? Or does he want to be joined to Jesus, to join with others in following Jesus and therefore live in a very different kind of life of generosity and kindness and hope? Well, I guess in his mathematical mind, perhaps, Levi seems to make a very quick decision and we're told that he got up, he left everything and he followed Jesus. That's some commitment, I think, to make to leave everything, all of his money, his security, his job, everything he knew in order to join Jesus. And yet there was obviously something compelling about the person and the call of Jesus on his life. What was it, do we think, though, that persuaded Levi to drop everything and follow Jesus? Well, there could be many answers, but I suspect that for someone in Levi's position, someone for whom security was obviously and had obviously been such a driver in his life, I suspect the sense that he could trust Jesus would have been pretty near the top of his list of reasons. Indeed, when making decisions, when knowing perhaps who to follow, how to do life, I'd suggest trust is key for us. For example, 
Let's think about these things, marshmallows, for a moment. Because there's a famous experiment that child psychologists conduct called the marshmallow test. I don't know if you've heard of this one. In the test, an adult gives a child one marshmallow, which they're told they're allowed to eat. Feel free to eat that. But they're also told that if they can wait and resist eating that marshmallow while the adult who gave it to them goes out the room for a few minutes, but when the adult returns, if that marshmallow is still sitting there, then the child will be given two marshmallows. Kind of delayed gratification, if you like. I don't know how you'd have fared with that experiment when you were growing up. I think I'd have failed within a few seconds on that one. But when it was, when it was first conducted, this is from the 1970s when it first came in, scientists sort of tended to conclude that it was a test of self-control. And yet, as more research was done, what psychologists found in a far more striking way was that this marshmallow test is not actually so much about self-control as it is about trust. In that, did the children trust that the adult would come back and honour their promise of a second marshmallow? If they felt they could trust the adult, the children tended to wait. But if the children felt they couldn't trust the adult, then they took what was on offer in front of them, even if that meant they might miss out on something better in the long run. Now, what's the marshmallow got to do with Levi? Well, two thoughts, perhaps. Firstly, I think, where there's a lack of trust, you know, particularly in those who have authority over us, I think people are probably more inclined to take what they can when they can. That maybe explains Levi's decision to become a tax collector in the first place, you know, choosing to look after his own interests as it probably felt he couldn't trust either the temple system or indeed the wider Roman Empire to always look out for him. So he was sorting himself out while he could with what he could. And I guess maybe that explains why people, why we perhaps, are often inclined to keep back more than we need sometimes. Or we worry so much about the future because understandably, perhaps, we don't always trust those in authority over us. But secondly, when we do trust what someone has promised, even if that promise is unseen or of a future hope, as with Jesus' call, when he simply says, follow me, that trust, it seems, enables us to be far less concerned with security or wealth because we trust ultimately, that our needs will be provided for, and in effect, all will be well. You see, in choosing to leave everything behind in order to follow Jesus, Levi decided in that instant that he could trust Jesus with what was to come. You know, if we think about it, at this stage, Jesus hadn't promised him anything. He just said, follow me. But that was enough for Levi to get up and go. What's interesting is that Levi would, in time, become known as Matthew, which is a, a name change probably given to him by Jesus in the same way that Jesus changed Simon's name to Peter. Now, Levi, as we saw, means joined. Levi, having joined Jesus, becomes known as Matthew, which we said yesterday in the baptism, means gift of God, which is, if you think about from moving from joined to be in a gift of God, that's quite a transition, quite a hopeful, forward-looking kind of name, perhaps, and a name which from early on became synonymous with one of the gospel accounts of Jesus' life, the gospel, the good news of Matthew, which it's reckoned Matthew had some kind of input or authorship in. You know, for us, I don't know what kind of concerns or worries each of us might have in life. I know some of them from conversations with us, but each of us will have things that worry us, that concern us, uh, anxieties perhaps about the future. If you're anything like me, it can be all sorts of things that, that keep us awake at night or cause us to feel unsettled. And yet the same call that Jesus gives to Levi, to Matthew, I'd say is the same one that he gives to us. And it's simply this 
to follow me. It's not to be so anxious that we, we get ahead of ourselves and not to lag behind in a state of lethargy, but instead to follow Jesus one step, one day at a time, because from all that we know of Jesus and the God who Jesus reveals, we can trust Jesus. I'd say this ability to trust, as the name Matthew suggests, is a gift of God. You know, it's a treasure Jesus places and by his spirit grows in us. In that the more we choose to trust Jesus, the easier, in a sense, that trust becomes. And if we think about it, the alternative is pretty bleak. There's a little passage where Jesus' followers, a lot of them leave him because they can't handle difficulty, perhaps, of some of his teaching. And Jesus says to his disciples, are you going to leave too? Is this too much for you as well? And I think it's Peter who pipes up. He says, Lord, to whom could we go? You know, you've got the words of eternal life. If we can't trust you, who else is going to be better? So this idea of following Jesus, not only in a negative sense is it, well, who else better is there to follow than Jesus? But in a positive sense, it's about trust because we see in the life of Jesus someone who's got us, someone who will lead us, and someone who will always love us. Indeed, I guess my prayer in the midst of whatever uncertainties or, or indecision or anxieties we might have in life is that you and I would, would increasingly do as Levi did, that we would know and respond to the gentle, guiding, trustworthy voice of Jesus, who simply says to each of us day by day, follow me. Amen.